Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, so kind of as I talked about last time, the Q&A update, uh, I have a MOX device coming up and well, that's today. So it's kind of a gloomy Sunday outside here. Uh, so I thought I would toss together this Moxon vise real quick and uh, put it on film for you guys to see. Uh, plans uh, you can download from Benchcrafted and they're actually pretty good. They, do, they go into a lot of history and stuff on the, the Moxon vise which I thought was cool. Um, but you can download them there. Now mine is going to be in maple and I didn't have enough maple for the back support but I did have a really nice little piece of cherry sitting around. So I'm going to use cherry for the back support, should not be an issue. Um, now I'm going to swing the camera around and show you what I have here real close because my plans or my build isn't quite the same as Benchcrafted, it's, it's close. I just wanted some extra feet uh, on the end here. So I allowed for that. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. But I've marked these two boards up, which are already milled, by the way, with all the notes for everything I need to do to build this Moxon vise. So this should be a pretty cool one day build. But let me flip the camera around and kind of zoom in on these two boards. Hopefully I can get over the top a little bit and I'll show you what I'm doing and, and kind of what the plans call for. Okay, so I really hope all these marks uh, show up on film. Um, you notice down here I have this mark top and I have the same mark on the back side of this one. So these two boards come together um, and that's because they are different widths. Uh, this is made so that this one is just a little bit smaller so it registers against the front of your bench, kind of like a hook effect. Um, so this backboard is only five and a half inches wide and that is per the plan. And this front board is five and five eighths, and that is per the plan. Uh, the front vise as well is 32 inches long, and all this is in the plans, so you can get that there. Now where I changed is on this back one, I wanted a little extra foot on each side, so I went ahead and added two inches to this board. But to get the whole locations I registered from here on the front, which is three and a half inches in per the plan. And then I used a square to pick up that location on both boards. And it's the same on both ends. Um, now per the plan, this front one is the elongated hole so that it doesn't bind. Um, and we're gonna drill a three quarter through hole and then we're gonna elongate that to roughly 15 16. So we're gonna add about an eighth uh, on each side of the hole no big deal. Uh, so that's really all of the layout marks. Oh, these holes here, this one and this one are three quarter through holes. But before we do that, we need to do uh, an inch and a half or a little bit smaller Forstner bit first to 13 16 deep. And then we'll chisel around the nuts because those nuts have to get buried in there. And then of course, mine differs in the plan because I'm going to notch out these corners uh, just so I can put F clamps on them at the bench if I want, or I can hold on the hold fast uh, using the support block that will still get attached to it. So that's what we're gonna do. I can come back and sand all these marks off later. Now you notice I got a little tear out uh, in here on the board. And I was, this board was questionable as to whether it was actually wide enough but being the back and the bottom, um, I, I, I'll probably put a little chamfer on it. I'm okay with that. Uh, it's shop furniture, and I'll live with that. So next up, uh, we'll go to the drill press, and we'll go ahead and take care of some of these holes first. Probably We'll probably do the Forstners and get to the chisel work first and get that out of the way, uh, and then set up with a three quarter so that we can draw all the holes at once. So I think that inch and a half or just a smidge under inch and a half um, Forstner bit will be next up. Just 
So that first hole I drilled, I actually drilled with an inch and a quarter Forstner bit, not an inch and a half. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and do the three quarter through hole. I'm only going to go most of the way and then I'll turn it over and drill it from the back side. Now while I'm set up here at the drill press, I'm going to go ahead and drill the three quarter through holes in the front of the vise. Um, and the same process, I'm going to drill most of the way through and then I'm going to pick up the other side so I don't get a bunch of tear out. So the last thing I got to do to the holes is just elongate them. And I drew it out here. It's, it's a little over a heavy sixteenth uh, on each side. And I'm just going to do that with a half round file. Okay, so the last thing I need to do here is just get this back support uh, glued on. And I just set bolts in place temporarily to help me just eyeball center, because this is all just for clamp down. Okay, so while we're waiting for that glue to cure up, I want to go ahead and chamfer this outside edge. So if I want to do some half line dovetails or something in that, I have just a little bit of extra wiggle room. So I got the blade tipped uh, close to 60 degrees, somewhere in that neighborhood. It, the number doesn't matter as long as you, know, you get the, the piece off that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and chamfer this now, and then I'll, I'll clean it up, and we should be getting pretty close to putting this thing together. <laughs> Use some contact cement to install the crubber. Let's get a good coat on here, let it tack up almost surface dry. And then I will roll the crubber inside out and try to get it on here in one shot. They don't give you a lot of extra, so you kind of only get one shot at it. I also suggest a little ventilation when you do this. This stuff is fairly strong. All right, and this is should you put them in here. And I just happen to have a J roller to, to roll this all out. Get all those air pockets out. All right, so the last thing here is just to trim this up. All right, since I have a little bit of armor seal left over, I'm just gonna go ahead and get a coat of armor seal on it. I don't know that it really needs it. 
had shop furniture, but it'll just look a little better. So there it is. Um, I have it clamped down to my assembly table right now, which I'm super excited to be able to have a vise at my assembly table because I do so much work here. Um, but it just works absolutely fantastic. Uh, just slide your wood in and, and crank it down. And it doesn't take a lot of pressure and you can't move it. And then if I wanted to cut dovetails now, I can cut dovetails. There's no movement in the vise. Um, does exactly what it's supposed to do. Super stable. I'm super happy with that. So those of you that have followed me for a while also know that I have the Benchcrafted High Vice. Um, and this is, this is really like the leg vise with the scissor in it. And it's a very cool vise. And again, it mounts to the top like this does. Um, but there's just a little bit of slop in this one. And I just found a little bit too much movement in it. So with the movement that's in it, I just haven't used it much over the years. The new Moxon vise, I find myself using... Uh, a great deal. So look for it in a project coming up here uh, very soon. So that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions, uh, my email's in the show notes. My affiliate page is in the show notes. And I, I ask you please to hit the affiliate page because uh, that helps support all these sites and the free plans and everything else. Um, but yeah, and hit the forum sites. Um, the forums are only as good as the community that's around them. And so you guys could jump in and, and offer questions or advice or, you know, whatever it is, just contribute. So that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. And until next time, take care.